would be a place like Christ for the nations, a place where the wells of healing are being dug and being reopened from the, uh, the old into the new. This is a place where God is welling up in this place. This is a place that's gonna change you for all eternity. You'll never be the same again. I'm so grateful, God, that I get to come into a place, Father God, where the leadership of the school invites men and women in to remind us to whom we belong, but God, not just to get to that place where we're merely living, but thriving, Father, that we see signs and wonders and miracles happening in our very midst, and that it even goes out from here into the internet and all the people that we touch in the world, God. We're so grateful that you would call us to be your own, Father, and we welcome you in this place today. We recognize that you're here, Father. God, we're just grateful for you. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice. Holy Spirit, have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, guys. We all have a seat this morning. I have a couple of brief announcements, but I need to make sure you're listening well. If you were in the very back and I can't see your lovely faces, please move forward. You need to be no further than two to three rows behind the Great Divide. Uh, and I do have on my boots today. They're not my sassy boots, but they're my cute boots. But still, I, you know, that still means I'm in business, okay? It's good. So y'all go ahead and move up, move forward. It's a good thing. Besides, we all know that all the glory flows from right here, right out. Come on. I always wanted to sit. I sat right there where that beautiful single mama is, right there. I sit right there. That was my seat when I was a, a student here, but I caught things. I caught it. It was good. So y'all just move forward, please. I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So uh, James Reed asked me to make an announcement. So please make sure you're listening because I don't want you to come to me later and say, I didn't hear it. I didn't know. We're going to be renovating our four-year area, which is good. They're going to be painting and do things like that. So he's asked me just to let you know that from now on, that will not be a holding place for your food, your drinks, or your skateboards. So if they come up missing, you've been warned. <laughs> Um, actually, really, the truth is, is when you put your skateboard against the wall, it kind of chips at the paint. And because uh, the Lord has provided that we be able to renovate that, we want to keep that as nice as possible. Okay? So uh, can y'all please just do that? We love that you skateboard. I think it's wonderful. I have a son that will be 25 on Sunday, and he was a skateboarder. But he knew not to put them on my walls. Right? Okay. All right. How many of you are excited? Today is Wednesday. It's a great day to be alive. It's a beautiful day in Texas. The sun is shining. I have some bad news. Cold front's coming in tonight. <laughs> oh, you people. Come on. I met a student here once, and he said, how can Texas be so sunny all the time? I was like, that's a thing? Like, you're, you're upset about that? That's funny. Anyways, so just remember, please do not, no longer bring your food, your drinks, and things like that and send them out in the foyer because they will be thrown away. And uh, I don't know how to skateboard, but if your skateboard's out there, I might be learning. Okay, so don't, don't leave your skateboards out there and park them somewhere else. Okay, all right. So how many of you were here last night? I've heard great things. I saw a testimony on Facebook where somebody was just simply watching online, and they just got so uh, revved up by what the Holy Spirit was doing, they weren't even here. So I have great expectancy today. So let's just welcome Dr. Herzog today and give him room to move. Thank you. Let's give Jesus a bigger hand. Come on. Woo! You are worthy, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Woo! Just, let's just lift your hands to the Holy Spirit right now. And the, there's still an overflow from last night here. You feel it really strong. How many feel that here? It was fun last night. Lord, we just welcome your presence in this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, right now. Fill this place with your glory. Continue to take us from glory to glory. Every service, Father. We're not satisfied with what we had last night. It was awesome, but we pray that you would do more today even, Father. Open the windows of heaven, Father. Open the windows of heaven. Teach us, speak to us, touch us, whatever you want to do, Father. Give us revelation today, Father. Take every veil from our eyes off. Take every blockage. Give us fresh revelation today, Father. We worship you. We praise you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Angels, you're free to minister to your people today. Whew, you feel that presence here? It's really, really thick. And how many want to live in this every day? And this is the secret of staying. How many want to never get burned out? 
stay in his presence and his glory. We've been doing this for 25 years, and I'm just as excited now as when I was here at the school. And the key is intimacy, close to God every day. How many want that? Because you can have all, and you should study. You need to know the word. You need to memorize the scriptures. You need all that. But if you don't have the intimacy with him, then you could be, you know, Pharisees know the scriptures. And, and they had even good doctrine, but yet they didn't know him. How many want to know him first? And out of that knowing him and out of that presence, God will start, you know, because you could have the scriptures memorized, and you should, but you still want to be led by the Lord. When you talk to people, you want to know, okay, God, what do you want me to say? I don't want to rely on my own understanding or learning. I want to rely on you, Father. And that's what Paul was brilliant. He knew languages. He, I mean, he pretty much wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, yet he said, I don't rely on my human learning, my human wisdom, and he was brilliant. But, but I rely on God to know him, to make him known. All my learning is as done compared, compared to the excellency of knowing him. How many want to know him more? And I can feel that presence here right now. Just, just let it come with a few more seconds here. Whew, Father, we just welcome you. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Man, it's thick in here. Thick, thick, thick presence. Even as I'm teaching, if you know, be, be free to be healed because God can just touch you at any moment. It's not dependent on me even praying for you. There's a glory realm that's here. It says that uh, Jesus went to many places and they were all healed. It doesn't say he laid hands on everybody all the time, but they were healed. How many believing God can touch you, speak to you? We've had crazy things happen just like teaching. You know, start teaching and suddenly people missing teeth, teeth start growing out. Crazy stuff. I'm just teaching and some, someone starts screaming and demons come out. It's fun. How many want to do this every day? Who was not here last night? You were not here last night. Raise your hand. Okay, so you can come up to repent really quick. The altars are open. All right, now it's okay. No, it was fun. How many got healed last night? How many got healed but you didn't testify because you didn't know, you didn't realize you were healed or just for whatever reason you didn't get to testify but you realized you were healed? How many were healed and did not share? You were healed. What were you healed of? You what? Your feet? What was wrong with them? Flat feet. She was about to say fat feet and she meant flat feet. <laughs> Some people have flat feet and fat feet too, so it's, it, it could be, yeah. So they weren't hurting anymore. And they don't, you don't have flat feet anymore or what? But the pain's gone. Praise God. That's awesome. Praise you, Jesus. Anyone else was healed of something last night? I know we had a lot of creative miracles, but most of them shared things disappearing, and I forgot what all the stuff we had. It's a blur to me now. Anyone else? Anyone died? <laughs> How many got weight loss? Who got weight loss? Sometimes we see people just dropping weight in the glory realm, instant weight loss miracles. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about this glory realm. How many want to know more about the glory? How many want to operate in his glory? How many know about the anointing already, the anointing? Okay, so I share a little bit about that. And, and you know you're anointed to do the work of ministry, right? How many know that's good? And, you, and how you stir up that anointing, you pray in the spirit, you read the word, you get fired up, and you go out and you minister, and you release the power of God. How many have done that? Two people. That's awesome. All right. No, no more than that. And, and that's great, and God uses you. you. You have different giftings, anointings that God uses you. And I shared last night, it's like a battery of a laptop computer. It's charged up. You release it, and that's great. But there's another dimension of the glory where it's not just coming from the anointing within you. It's a glory cloud around you. You're in the presence of God, living under open heaven. How many want that? And when you're under an open heaven, it's, it's not dependent just on you. Because if it's just you, let's say you're a pastor or something or you're an evangelist and someone calls you, hey, can you drive five hours and pray for this person? This person's sick. All right, well, you have to drive over there five hours, pray for them, come back. But when you're in the glory realm, it's a whole different thing. There's no distance of time in the glory realm. How many understand that? There's no distance of time or space. So Jesus tells the Roman centurion, you know, hey, I mean, or the Roman centurion says, just, just speak the word, Jesus, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus says, this guy's got the highest level of faith of all of Israel. And he's not even Israeli. He's not even Jewish. He doesn't even have a covenant with the God of Israel, but he gets it. And that hour he was healed. How many want to move like that? So there's no distance of time or space. In the, I remember I was in a meeting and I said, there's someone here. And I gave the name, first and last name of the person. How many love it when you get accurate in the prophetic? Isn't that fun? Only bummer was they weren't there. <laughs> So there's someone here with this name, but there, there was no one standing up with that name. <laughs> so isn't it, isn't it awesome? It was accurate, but there's no one there by that name. <laughs> so I go, what is going on here? And the, the Lord says, you just preached about there's no distance in the glory. And a lady comes up and goes, that's my husband's full name. 
And I said, stand up. And at first, I didn't know what was wrong. And I just pointed at her, and I said, come back. And I said his name, come back. And she fell out in the spirit, came back the next day and told me he was in a coma for four days. When I called his name out, he woke up. And I started picking up on the no distance in the glory thing. Uh, last night I shared about a resurrection we saw in Africa from a distance. We just commanded this, bot, this person to come back from the dead while I'm on the stage. And at the hospital, she rose back from the dead from a distance. How many know you can operate in those realms of glory? So you're not limited just to, you know, the, of the foundational stuff is laying out of hands. You know, and Paul even says this is great, but let's not stay only with the elementary principles, but let's go on to perfection. How many want to go on? And we are in the last days now. How many want to go from glory to glory? But if you don't know that, yeah, lay hands. But sometimes you lay hands, sometimes God says, let me do it a different way. I want to be open to different ways, not just your hand all the time. Sometimes you do it, sometimes you say, let me do this. Step back, and healing angels will come and just, inst you know, there's a story of a guy, uh, David Hogan, you heard of him in Mexico, and he raises the dead a lot. And, you know, and they see miracles all the time, but one time this little girl fell off a cliff, cracked her head wide open. The brains, a little four-year-old, brains are on, she's dead. I mean, she's dead, dead. And they're like, oh, that's, that was beyond their faith level. How I many know sometimes something's beyond your faith? You're just like, and, and you, what you do, you leverage your faith. The, and the Lord said, just worship me. So, and the dad was there too, like, oh, my God. So they just start worshiping him for about four hours. The glory came so strong. They heard a voice. They looked down, and God had recreated her head, and she started crying, Daddy, get me out of this ditch. But her brains are still on the rocks. God had recreated it. So there's realms of glory where your faith works, and then sometimes you have to leverage your faith. Like Peter had faith to walk on water, right? He, he's the one asking, I want to come. Tell me to come. But here's the secret. How many of you ever stepped out in faith, but it didn't work somehow? You, you thought you believed. You did it. I'm going to do this. I believe. I receive it. The word says it. You jumped out, and nothing happened. How many of you ever had that happen? And you wonder, because a lot of people don't explain this stuff. A lot of teachers don't explain. They just tell you all the faith stories. They don't tell you why it doesn't work. I always ask God, why did that not work? So Peter goes, tell me to come. Here's the difference. He didn't, he didn't step out on his faith until he got the glory of God speaking to him directly. He had faith to go, but it's timing. He waited till the spoken word of God came. Sometimes you have to wait. How many have been called to the nations, the mission field, to different places? Okay, you're like, I'm going to go to the mission field. And then you're, you're ready to go, and then God goes, wait, go to, go to see if and I first. What? Uh, two years, I don't have time for that. I gotta get. How many, how many of that happened to you? Same with the apostles. He goes, go into all the world. You're going to heal the sick, cast the demons. Oh, but wait for the Holy Spirit to come upon you. So sometimes, so he waited. And Jesus goes, okay, come. And Jesus is the king of glory. How many believe that? So when, when he speaks, and, Jesus, and Peter put his faith on, he didn't go, I can do all things through Christ. He wasn't just claiming that he can walk on water. He put his faith in the word come that came from the glory cloud. And, and he walked on it. The word became solid matter or flesh. Does that make sense? So, so there's different realms of glory, and I'll share them how to get into those realms. But how many want to operate in the greater glory? Because a lot of you already know how to lay hands, right? You know that stuff, speaking tongues. How many want to go from glory to glory? Because there's some situations you're going to encounter, like that boy who threw himself in the fire. They couldn't get him delivered. They're like, how come this one we can't do it? And Jesus goes, oh, yeah, this kind comes up by prayer and fasting. Not works, but fasting is one way to get into the glory. Does that make sense? Praise and worship is another way, daily, praising him. And how many want to use worship daily to get in the glory? Here, here's how I do it. Praise him until the spirit of worship comes. It's very simple. Praise is the fast breakthrough, shouting, dancing kind of songs, faster rhythm until you feel a break. Then you go into the slow, intimate, and the glory starts to come in. Then you just stand in that, bask in that glory. That's what I do every day. I just bask in that glory. And then I pray what he tells me to pray. It's going to be quiet in here. It also gets quiet when I stop talking. Watch. Wow, amazing. <laughs> I'm going to try it again. Some preachers, they think they're so powerful, they go, I'm going to say a profound statement, and they say it, they go, hmm, got quiet. Because yeah, you're the only one talking. You're, you have the microphone. <laughs> Don't flatter yourself, right? <laughs> but that presence, man, that, that's everything. Who, who wants that? And I said last night, it's better to be an amateur in the new thing that God's doing now than a professional in the old. He moves in, he's the same God, but he moves in different ways, in different generations, at different times. This glory is covering the earth. The earth shall be filled with the knowledge of the glory. I got gotcha. you. You could have the glory come and leave, but not have the knowledge of how to unpack it, and it doesn't change anything. You could have it come, oh, you're here, thank you, Lord, and it leaves, but no one's healed, no one's saved, no one's delivered. It, it came and it left. How many want it to not just come, but manifest? 
So first you want them to come, and then you want them to manifest. Genesis 1.1, in the beginning, God created. How many want to move in the creative? Okay, how, how did he do it? It says, the Spirit of God began to hover, the presence of God, the Spirit of God, whatever you want to call it, the kabod, the glory, began to hover over the earth. The earth was in chaos. It was void. There was darkness. That's a whole other teaching of what happened, but, but something was wrong. The Holy Spirit came. And basically, and it's, some translations say it recreated the earth, but whatever that chaos was, the Holy Spirit came and hovered over the waters, the Spirit of God, and recreated. So when the Spirit of God begins to hover, and then God spoke, let there be light, let there be this, let there be that. So the glory of God's presence comes first, then he speaks. That's why you worship before service all around the world, and then you preach. Because worship, praise, and worship prepares the Spirit to hover. So when the word is spoken, it, it creates life. If you just have word with no spirit, it, it doesn't, it, it's missing water. It won't grow. Does that make sense? So a lot of churches and ministries and, you know, they're dry. They have a lot of word, but there's no presence of God. Some have a lot of presence, but there's no revelation. <laughs> they can so soak all day till they're blue in their face, but no one's getting saved. They're just soaking to soak. I, I've been in soaking meetings where they were snoring. Like, oh, I feel so refreshed. The refreshing is here. Yeah, you fell asleep for three hours in my meeting. <laughs> wow, I feel so refreshed, David. This is the renewal of God. Yeah, because you don't sleep at home. You sleep in my meetings, you know. No, oh, I feel good. I, feel, I think I was getting visited. Yeah, by snoring. I heard it. The snoring anointing. Yeah, like, oh, I mean, really loud on the front. I'm like, is that soaking or just sleeping? Man? But, but how many want that presence of God's glory? So in the beginning, God created. So when I got this revelation on Genesis 1, I just asked the Lord, Lord, how can we see a lot of healings, you know, in the body of Christ? But, but there wasn't a lot of creative miracles in about the, or the 90s. I was asking, late 90s, God, where's the creative miracles? Where's the signs and wonders? Where's the stuff we read about? I watch A. Allen. I watch all the 50s guys, the 60s. I said, where, where is that stuff? We hardly see it. You know, there's a few big-name speakers ha maybe having it, and that's it on the earth. And he says, because my people are only seeing me as healer, so I heal. They preach me as healer, so I heal. But if they would perceive me as creator, I would create. They think in the beginning I created, and then I just went on autopilot, and when something breaks, they call it the maintenance man to fix it, like in a hotel. But I'm still the creator, not in the beginning. Because I was preaching healing, and then God would heal. I preached on deliverance. He would, he'll confirm the word with the accompanying signs. So I started getting re revelations, searching it out. Wait, he's still the creator. In fact, that was his first nature. He was created before he was healer. Which means it's even more natural for him to create something out of nothing than even to heal something broken. Because if man had never sinned, we never would have gotten sickness. Do you see what I'm saying? So I start getting this revelation. Now listen, re you can write this down. Revelation brings a manifestation. A revelation. Not, not just a written word. You can have a written word. I heard these guys, guys were in Korea. Young Cho was preaching on the fourth dimension. And, the, and, you know, if you just believe it, you receive it. And they misunderstood it, these two Korean girls. And there was a raging flood. And they said, well, I believe it. The word says it. Peter walked on water. We're going to walk on the water. And they went on the water and they died. Why? Because God didn't tell them to. <laughs> sure, it was in the Bible, but, it did, but he's not, is he specifically telling you right now to do that? How many know we have to be close to the Holy Spirit? We can't be robots. We still need intimacy with God to confirm the written word. You, know, you have to know the word to know what's confirming, but how many want to know him? Direct, rhema from God. In the beginning, God created how? He hovered over the waters, and he, as he hovered, then he spoke, let there be. So what I do, I worship God, I praise him, I wait till the presence comes. Like last night, we were worshiping a bit. I was up here singing a little bit after the worship, kind of flowing in the, with the Lord with, with you guys. And then all of a sudden, I saw him, and I heard, so I said what I heard, and it started happening. How many want that? Jesus said, I only do what I see or hear the Father do. How many want to move like that? That's a big, huge key. How many want to know your destiny? You're here, but you still don't know exactly what your destiny is. You're like, I think I'm called to this, but I'm not sure. It, you're not going to get it just in a class. You can't even just wait for a prophet to call you out. You have to know for you. Because when you go to those places and the, and the going gets tough, you better, you, then you're going to doubt, well, was that prophetic word right? You have to know for you. You can get words to confirm it, but you need to know for sure what's what, especially who you marry, too. How many want that? My wife Stephanie's watching, I think. Hello, Stephanie. I think she's up watching. If you're watching, I love you, sweetie. We met right here in Christ of the Nations. And she's got an awesome book. In fact, God is Your Matchmaker. She wrote this book, powerful book, How to Make God Your Matchmaker. How many want to make God your matchmaker? Okay. It's not Brides for the Nations. It's Christ for the Nations. <laughs> so seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. Then all these things will be added. Don't be like, don't be like in the worship. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay. Uh, and then you see someone a little, you think is a little better. Oh, no, forget it. 
She's like, slap, oh, sorry. No, I see looking for love in all the wrong places, man. <laughs> see, the Bible says seek a wife. It's, you, it's Those who find a wife find a good thing. <laughs> I think you misinterpreted it. <laughs> you just spend all day seeking. Oh, man. So that's why people are church hoppers. They go to different churches looking for their mate. They can't find it, so they just church. So we're gonna do Bible school hopping. Go here for a few years, and go to Bethel, then go to Old Roberts, and go to Raymond until you find your wife. I mean, come on, then you'd be 20 years in Bible school before you get married. <laughs> but anyway, that's beside the point. But but when you're in the glory room, God will show you these things. Even your mate. How many want to know that? So revelation, spontaneous obedience to the word that He tells you brings spontaneous results. Revelation brings manifestation. You soak in the glory of God, and then you get in the Word, and then He speaks to you. A thought comes to your mind, and you start to filter which thoughts are your thoughts, which thoughts are His thoughts, and you start, like I was in Spokane the other day, and I was getting names of people. Someone's named Roy. You have this. There's only one Roy in the whole room, and he had that. Boom, and it hit. How do you do that? You, you just have to start trusting that voice of God. How many want to know His voice? Know His ways. Moses said, I've seen your, 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 your power. I've seen your works, but I want to know your ways. He wanted to go. He didn't want just the benefits of the glory. He wanted to know the God of the glory, the intimacy. I want to know you. If you know him in his heart, you'll get the other. How many want that? Don't even just seek power or miracles or, or manifestation or ministry or anything. Seek his presence, the source. Who wants? If you got the source, you got everything. Who wants the source? If you have the source, you'll have finances. You'll have the doors to open. You'll have, don't try to open doors. So many kids uh, after school, they go, hey, here's my business card. Can you, can you invite me? It doesn't work because even if you get invited, it, you, you, you'll hate it. You'll be like, what am I doing here? They're not even hungry because you open the door yourself. How many trust that God can open the door? I mean, I just took off from here, went straight to the mission field. No one knew who we were at all. No one cared who we were, especially in France at all. I tell them about Jesus and they go, Jesus? Oh, he works in the subway playing the accordion. That's from Colombia, right? I go, no. Jesus from, they, they were so be, lost, you know. I had to start with, that's why I'm really good at Genesis. I explained who God was first before I talk about his son. And, and, and I was like, this is so hard. How do I win these people? But he starts showing me, if you do what, if Jesus was here, would he be successful? I go, yeah. He goes, well, do what Jesus is doing and you'll see things happen. But some of the other missionaries were there for many years. They were doing the stuff, the mechanical stuff that, that used to work 20 years ago wasn't working. They were, they were drying up and they're like, this is how you do it. This is how you do it. And I'm watching them going, these guys are they're, they're not happy. They're depressed. They're, they're about to go crazy, these missionaries. I'm not going to be like them. God, I don't want to be, well, at least you tried on my gravestone. And, and, and France is known as a missionary's graveyard. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So the Lord said to me, spend time with me. Do it. Do what I tell you to do. And things started erupting. We were doing stadiums. We, we were, it was filmed on TV in Europe every Sunday night, all the meetings we were doing, the Champs Elysees once a week. Power God, Muslims, French people, just all kind of six-month revival. Went in one place for six months straight, the longest in 50 years in 1998. I mean, things started happening because we seek him first, his kingdom, his righteousness. Then all these things will be added. How many want that? How many couldn't care less? You don't even care. You're just here because you have to be here. Some of you haven't taken your coffee. You're like, whoa. Just, just take some Holy Ghost energy. Ready? All right. There you go. Without the heart problems. Amen. It's Red Bull. Holy Ghost Red Bull. And that ain't no bull. All right. Huh. Whew, man, the presence of God's here so strong. And you can tap into the joy of the Lord. Some people are not happy. They love God. They are doctrinally correct. But they're not happy. They're like, I have the joy of the Lord. Hallelujah. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The face doesn't match the words somehow. Something's wrong. <laughs> so we should just be bubbling out of us. And the lost... They don't just pick up your words. They pick up your countenance, your presence. You, you go knocking on door-to-door -door evangelism. Hey, would you like to go to my church? And who's that woman in your house, huh? Oh, my wife about, of 20 years. Oh, I'm sorry. Just checking. The, the, can you give me a ride home? My car just died on your driveway. Oil everywhere. Sorry. I mean, that, that's not going to work, you know. You don't look happy, you look upset and nervous, and there's no joy. They're not going to be drawn. Sometimes if I'm, I'm just soaking in God's glory, I go to the grocery store, and people just sense it. They go, who are you? You have a countenance. You have or the, the new angels call it an aura around you. The, the cashier goes, you have good karma. Now, if you, if you have a religious spirit, you'll rebuke them. How dare you? That's from Hinduism. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. You just lost a soul. They're trying to compliment you with their vocabulary that they know, and you're recursing them. Karma's not in the Bible. Yeah, I know, but they're trying to compliment you. They don't know. 
So I go, here's what you do. When they go, you have good karma, sir. Watch this, this secret, ready? Thank you. Can I pray for you now? They just complimented your karma. So with my such great karma, can I pray for you and give you some? <laughs> you start praying for them, the power of God hits them, demons are coming out, and they go, what was that? That was Jesus. You demonstrate first, sneaky. He's Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, he's also Jehovah Sneaky. He is, oh, he's sneaky. His microphone's coming apart, but it's okay. I was at, I was at the gym where I, where I live, and I, you know, there's a sauna in there. In the wintertime, we get some snow. We actually have some snow right now. So I was sitting there like, oh, this feels so good. And this hippie, new agey guy comes in, and he's got these sores. Uh, he's got a towel around him. He's got these sores on his legs, really bad bandages on his legs, and he looks like a Holocaust victim. He's so, like, beyond skinny. And he goes to these rave party things and weird stuff. And I go, what happened to your legs? He goes, oh, I got bit by a spider, a certain spider that's very poisonous in California. Then I came out here and I got bit by the exact type of spider. I go, there's an issue there. He goes, I know. And I, and he, and I go, can I pray for you? That's all I said. I didn't say who in whose name. I didn't say Jesus yet. He goes, yeah, because he's a new ager. He's opened everything, right? He's the opposite of racism. He's, he loves all the gods. <laughs> It's the opposite of a bumper sticker I once saw that says, I'm not racist, I hate everybody equally. He loves all, everything. <laughs> he, he says, I love Muhammad, Jesus, Hindu, Buddha. I said, you can't, you can't, you gotta pick one, you can't have them all, right? And there's one that's the greatest and they'll lead eternal life. So I started praying for him. And the power of God hits him in the sauna. I mean, I'm like, this is weird, Lord, this is really awkward. He goes, pray for him now. And I start praying for him and then I start seeing in his bloodline certain iniquities that opened up the doors to the stuff he's in. And I start casting him out. And he goes, ah! And he starts screaming at the top of his lungs in the sauna. I'm thinking, we're gonna get, security's gonna come in here. And he gets completely healed. He goes, oh my gosh, I don't feel the pain. Takes a bandage off and his countenance is completely, no more demons in his eyes. And he says, oh, that's amazing. But he's still new age mindset. So he goes, what's that technique so I can do it at home? I go, it's not a technique or a mantra, it's a person called Jesus who's actually alive and rose from the dead. And he goes, oh my God, I want that. I want that. I heard about Jesus, but I didn't know it was real because they think it's a religion boring, dead thing because many churches are dead. So if you have the, you know, most of the world I realize really want Jesus, they don't want what they think Jesus is. The only Jesus they see is us, and they see a lot of Christians that are bitter and angry and protesting and against this, and they, that we're just against everything, and we don't like this people group. They think we don't like that people group or that. But when they see who he really is, people love Jesus. When they went, the Romans trains loved him, the prostitutes loved him, the tax collector. I mean, except for, except for the Pharisees. The only ones that didn't like him too much were the religious. Apart from that, most people, the sinners liked him. So if you can show the real Jesus, they're going to like it. They just haven't seen it. How many want to be Jesus to the people? So that's why we have to get closer to him and so it comes out of us. Even, our, even the presence, it's not always just the words you speak, the presence on you, the way you comport yourself, just the, you know, and, and people should be relaxed around you. They, they feel comfortable around Jesus. They were still convicted, but they were comfortable like they could approach him. How many don't want to be so high and mighty? Like, brother, you're going to hell. Usually, if you start with that, the answer is to hell with you, you know. <laughs> Uh, there's another book here called The Courts of Heaven. It's a new book I just wrote. How many want to get answers to prayer? Okay, one of the, how many, sometimes you pray and things happen, but sometimes it seems like there's a resistance and certain things are being blocked somehow. Have you ever had certain prayer requests are being blocked? You don't know why, but you can feel resistance somehow in the spirit, like blocking your prayers for healing, for finances, for your destiny, for whatever. How many have had that happen? How many have had people attack you and slander you wrongly and it's like, wait, that's not right and you didn't know what to do about it? How many have ever had that? Only three people, right? If, you ever, if you've been saved long enough, God will let you go through it purposely to see how you handle it. How many have ever been betrayed by a worker, Christian? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Ginger's been here long enough. If, you, if you've been in ministry long enough, if you've been betrayed by a, a close right-hand person, right? I found out that God actually allows it to happen because Jesus had to have it happen. Judas, right? He purposely, I realized, I said, Lord, why do I have to go through that? It hurt. He goes, because I see how you react to it. If you, can, if you can react to this the right way and not be bitter, you'll get better. I, I'll start blessing you more and trusting you more and more. So then I realized, oh, this is only a test. This is a test of the emergency, emergency broadcasting system. Had this been a real earthquake, you'd already be dead. You know? So when I realized it's a test, it's easier. I'm like, okay, it's not personal. It's only business. No. It's not the personal. I got to kill you. It's only business. But, <laughs> but, but you realize, and then you, it's not all about you. You don't take it personally. Does that make sense? So there's a place called heaven. How many have been there? How many know where it's at? How many know you can visit heaven even without dying? 
Paul went to third heaven. He talked about it. Different prophets, John, uh, uh, Ezekiel talks about the, the wheels and the wheels. I mean, how many know there's a place and the veil's been rent? We have access to the throne. By faith, of course, to pray, but even to see heaven. I was in Bethel in Israel, not the one in Reading, the one in the original one. And that's good too, but the, the one where it started. And it says, this is Jacob's ladder. I read in the Bible. So I t- told the tour guy, take, take our bus there. He says, we can't go there. That's past Ramallah. You got to rent a bulletproof bus to get there. I don't, I don't care. I'm going to get there. I want to go. He goes, you might get to heaven faster than you think. <laughs> I said, I want to go there. So we went there. We found it. We laid on the floor. We just started seeking the Lord. And we, were, we literally had heavenly visitations. I know this because I, I, I interviewed people to confirm what we were seeing. I saw Jesus looking at me and said, thank you for touching Ish- uh, Isaac, the Jewish people. We were doing Jewish evangelism. Touch Ishmael too. Would you do it? I go, yes, Lord. Suddenly all these doors to Muslim countries, Dubai, Bahrain, Qatar. The ne- I mean, the next week started opening up. And then the second thing he said to me was, would you organize a conference in Jerusalem for me? And my mind went, I don't live here. Who, who am I to do a conference in Jerusalem? I know how, the, how things are in Israel. You don't just do your own thing there at all. But God told me. And I said, well, okay. But I'm, I had reservations. Two days later, a friend calls me and says, we're going to do an outreach in Bethlehem to reach the Arabs. But I want you to organize one in Jerusalem. Then we'll move the speakers over to reach the Jews. And, we'll do, and it was like, well, Jesus just asked me that two days ago in a heavenly visitation. So how do you know if it's real? If it happens. <laughs> does, that, does that make sense? Is that logical? How do you know if a prophetic word is accurate? If it comes to pass. This is deep revelation I'm giving you. No one's ever going to tell you this. You've never heard this before. How do you know you're healed? Because you're not sick anymore. This is deep stuff. It sounds simple, but if you go deep, you realize there's a deep meaning behind it. All right. <laughs> How do you know you're not broke anymore? Because your bills got paid. That's, that's revelation, man. It's revelation. <laughs> Write that down. All right. <laughs> I'm getting drunk up here in the spirit. So you got, we need the joy all the time. Come, some of you, some, I see a lot of smiles. A lot of you, when you first came in, you look like you were just constipated spiritual. You're just like, you were trying to worship. You're like, ah. I didn't have my coffee. And now just the joy is hitting you. So it's good. This is the anesthesia for the operation, so take it. You, you need it. So, oh, man, I feel the presence so thick here. <laughs> I'm just throwing out a bunch of nuggets for you. How many want this? Desperate. Be, don't be hungry. Be desperate. i got to have this glory. got to touch you. You know, Acts 4, they were desperate. They were desperate. Acts 2, they had the, you know, they had the Holy Spirit fall. Pentecost, that was great. We've had past moves in America. That's been great. But it's not enough for this generation. We, have, we need a fresh outpouring. Azusa was great. The 50s revival was great. The Jesus movement was great. But for what's coming on the earth now, we need a fresh visitation of God. A fresh glory for this generation. Who wants it? So they, they had Acts 2, and that went for a while, but by Acts 4, they needed a fresh visitation. Because what happened? The warfare increased. They said, Lord, look at the threats. Look at the laws that have been changing against the church. That's what's happening now in America. Oh, my gosh, it's not the same group of people that it was 20, 30 years ago. And they said, Lord, look at their threats. Give us boldness. Stretch out your hand to heal now. We've, we've laid our hands. Stretch out your hand. And then Peter shouted, heal the sick, signs and wonders. And the number of disciples wasn't added to the church as in Acts 2 multiplication. The next glory level multiplies exponentially. How about finances? It doesn't even mention it in Acts 2. Acts 4, not one lacked anything among them. On earth as it is in heaven. If you died right now into heaven, let's say you had a big cancer come out of your belly and you walked into heaven, how long would it take for the cancer to be healed? Instantly because of the glory that's in heaven. If that glory comes here, same speed. There's an acceleration in the heavenly realm. If you had a bunch of debt, CF&I debt, and you had to pay the student bills, and then you went to, somehow you died early, you went to heaven. How, how much would you owe? Uh, you, the school still has to pay it somehow, but you, you got out of it. Right? <laughs> but that's not a solution. Don't do that. Right? But what I'm saying is, when you, once you're in heaven, your debts are paid. You're debt free. If you're married, get life insurance then, because someone's got to pay it. Right? <laughs> same with healing, same with deliverance. But if that glory comes here, the same speed. Here, I'll show you something. This is really cool. How many want to see supernatural transportation? Like, uh, so I've had, we've had this happen many times. Not trying to make it happen, but I started asking the Lord, how is this happening? He started showing me why I was trans- Eight-hour trip across the whole country of France, hour and a half we were there. Three-hour drive from Paris to Belgium. My car breaks down because I put the wrong gas. <laughs> it was an old used Mercedes that someone gave me. And I was like, oh, I got a Mercedes. Oh, old one, but I had one. And it broke down because I put the wrong gas. It's a diesel, and I put regular. Like, duh. Dumb American, you know. So then the, the tow truck comes and goes, oh, this is crazy. This, your, your engine's not going to work, sir. I've seen this before with this kind of car. I said, just empty it and put the right gas see what happens. Now, sir, I'm telling you, I do this for a living. I said, but I believe in Jesus. He's going to do a miracle. The guy goes, well, I'm an atheist. I go, great. You get to see your first miracle. 
I was just like, I got to get to my meeting. So he empties it, turns it on, no problem, it works. But that wasn't the bigger miracle. Now, my meeting was at 7 p.m. It takes three hours, but Friday night traffic, it's worse. Bumper to bumper. Normally it's three hours. So I finally get in the car at 7.30 on the outskirts of Paris to start leaving to go to my meeting. So I'm not going to make the meeting, right? I'm going to be there at least 10.30, 11. So I call the pastor. I'm so sorry. I can't make it. Why not? What happened? I was embarrassed to say the real the details, but I didn't lie. I said, the car broke down. I prayed. A guy came, it got fixed. I'll be there at 11. <laughs> so you preach tonight, Pastor, and I'll continue the next two nights. I'll just wave at the people when I come in so they know I'm in the area, and then they'll come back. All right, so I'm in the car, and I'm just, now I'm not rushing to traffic. I'm not preaching, right? I'm just enjoying God's presence. I'm putting this heavenly angelic music in the car and just feeling the car. I'm like, whoo, this is awesome. And how many know you feel lighter? You know, the molecular structure of your body literally changes on certain dimensions of glory. That's how Jesus went through walls. So, you know, you're made of sound. Inside your, inside your cells, protons, neutrons, you have sound waves. Sound waves go through walls, like the cell phones and all that. When you're in a certain state of glory, you expand. Smith Wigglesworth said, I'm a thousand times bigger on the outside than the inside. That, that's how Jesus went through walls. That's how people get transported out of prison. Well, I was in bumper-to-bumper -bumper traffic, okay? And I don't know what happened, but I was just feeling lighter and lighter and lighter. And here, here's a piece of paper. So here's Paris, France. Here's my desk. Here's where I'm starting. Here's where I need to be. Three hours linear earth time. In heaven, there's no time. Do you realize that? The glory, there's no time. As I'm worshiping God, I'm drawing the glory onto my car, and God starts to bend the time continuum where point A and point B, it took me, it took me about an hour to get, it, it didn't take God, it took me an hour to get out of myself into the realm of glory where I let go, and within about an hour, within a split second, no less than an hour, 45 minutes later, at 8.15, I was in front of the church in Belgium. I said, how, do, how am I? I didn't even see the sign. My turn off is here. Wait, that's impossible. I, I didn't understand what happened. I just walked in. They're still doing worship. The pastor's looking at me. How the heck did you get here? You take a helicopter? It's impossible. And we realized I had been transported. But how God did it was there's no time in glory. Glory claps into my car. And watch this. Point A, where my car is, my destination, he bends the time continuum. Does that make sense? That's how we've seen people lose 70 pounds, boom, in a split second. The glory is the accelerator. That's how the fish in the loaves suddenly multi. In CFNI here, I was, you know how you have to have, I don't know if it's the same now, but you have to have a ministry when you're here. Like every semester, it's evangelism or worship. So I did all, all of them. I did street evangelism, crazy stuff. I did worship at, at one of the churches in Lancaster. I would led worship one service or one semester. And my birthday, February 24th. So the, the lady, she's a prophetic lady at the church, wanted to honor me for my birthday and had 32 sandwiches. And the glory of God was very strong after the worship service. And she invited just a few friends, you know, like 10 people to come and, and you know, my friends. Well, the whole church thought it was for the whole church. And like 30, 40 people walk in there, start just eating all the sandwiches, all the stuff, all, all the punch. And she was so furious. She was about to scream at them. And the Lord says, don't get mad at them. Watch me do a miracle. So she keeps her mouth shut. And they're all eating all, everything. She had 32 sandwiches. Over 30, 40 people were in there eating two, three, four sandwiches. She, there were still sandwiches left over. She took, she asked everybody, how many did you all eat? They told them. It supernaturally multiplied. It's impossible. And she even had the punch. Punch was still half full, but she looked at all the glasses that were completely empty. It's God had multiplied. Even at CFNI, when I was here, we started seeing Oh my God. And God would just show me a little glimpse of what's possible. That's the glory realm of God. How many want to start operating in that? And people, some people say, well, you can't live on the wow. You have to stick to the word, brother. Well, the word becomes flesh. The word doesn't stay in. Sometimes some people worship ink. They worship ink on a paper. That's the Pharisees. They worship the words, but they don't actually worship Jesus in the words. Does that make sense? The Word of God is the Word of God, but, but, but how many, God wants it to be alive. If it's just dead, stuck in the binding, then, then it's, it's nothing. How many want the power to be manifested? That's what Paul said. I don't come to you with just nine eloquent words of human wisdom, but in demonstration of what I'm talking about, so your faith will not be in words, but in the power of God. Jesus said, if you don't believe me for the words I say, believe me for the miracles that you see. Does that make sense? So how many know this generation has to see? It's a visual generation. Periscope, you know, videos, YouTube, it's a visual. They're not going to believe unless you show them the goods. Just talk, the, the, the old days where they can just preach a good message, people get convicted, get saved, it's less and less. You know, because in those days, 50 years ago, somebody in your family was a Christian. A grandmother was praying for you or something. These days, whole high schools, you interview them, not one of them has ever been to church. So completely unchurched. How many want to reach this generation? Oh, man, I'm, I still got 15 more minutes. Are you, are you getting some kind of revelation here? 
the glory of God, presence of God, knowing him. How, how do you do that? Because there's four ways to get in the heavy glory. One of them is daily, the daily way is praising and worshiping him. You wake up in the morning, and I start to praise him. Sometimes if you start with the slow worshipy stuff, and it's not there, you're going to go to praise first. Some worship services, have you been to some services in churches or where they don't do praise, fast songs, they're just always soaking, and sometimes it's happening, sometimes there's nothing there. They're like, we're at the throne, and there's angels, but there's no angels yet, and the throne's far away, and everyone's looking at their iWatches and playing video games. But So if you go to praise first, then, the, then, then there's a breakthrough. Then you start to intimate worship, the heavy glory starts to come. Now I noticed this, African-American churches are great at praise and worship. How many, how many African Americans we got here? I'm prophetic. I knew you were. I just felt from the spirit. You know, I, I can pick up people's DNA. It's just a gift. You know, I can tell he's someone. Is, I can tell the Asians. You're Asian descent. I can tell you're Asian. I don't know why. I just get this thing. There's a couple white. You're, you're white, I think, right? White, right. It's a, it's a prophetic gift. And uh, and I and I go that man. Those guys can. If you were living in a small town, and there wasn't any really good spiritual churches, but there's only a black church or a white church. The black church would have better praise. Because even though three year olds, they're just like. Like they don't care. They're like, you got a problem with this? They're like with the attitude doing it. And the, the white church, hallelujah. It's like a funeral. Hallelujah. Look, Martha, I moved my leg. I'm technically dancing. Look, it's moving. Oh, my gosh. Look, I am dancing. Technically, but not for the three-year-old in the black church. That's not dancing. That's just walking. <laughs> so everyone's got their level of what they call breakthrough, okay? So, so I think, well, the best is get a black worship team to do the praise, and then a white worship team to do the soaking stuff, the soaky. Because whites are good at, we're soaking for hours. We're all hopping and baffling. We don't know what time it is. And that's awesome. We need that too. We just let everything go. But first, you got to break in to where you can do that. <laughs> Am I making sense here? I'm just breaking it down. Break it down. Break it down. <laughs> all right. I'm not going to rap. I just wore the suit just so you think I've. I was a do- I'm a doctor. I'm a doctor, actually. So I wore this just so, you th- so you'd realize I was. I'm kidding. Doctor, doctor. So, uh, oh, my God. Holiness, very important. None of us are perfect, but when something comes in, get it out of your system as soon as possible. Don't let the sun go down on your anger. The biggest sins I see that block the glory is anger, bitterness, unforgiveness. That kills it. So you can come out of a meeting like this, oh, the glory of God, and someone just says something to irk you, and you hold it in. Oh, I can't believe that. And you go to sleep like that, you wake up in the morning, it's just the presence of God dissipates off of you. It's, a, it's, a, it's holes. You, you, so you could have glory come and go. How many, sometimes you're in a meeting, it's so awesome, and it keeps going away. Find out what's making it leak. How many got, want to plug up all the leaks? So it could be little stuff that you think is little, like attitude, gossip. Oh, I don't, I don't like here. Yeah. Bible school has all these rules. I don't agree with them. Yeah. <laughs> Good luck. You know what? God actually allowed you to come here so that you'd have to obey the rules that seem silly to you. You know how I know? Because I had to. <laughs> I live in Arizona. I don't wear collars. One guy gave me a, a monitor guy. He goes, you're going to pay $5 for not wearing a collar at school today. I go, I'll create one. Watch this. And I bet my shirt. I create a collar. I go, here we go. But I was like, Lord, this is dumb. He goes, no, no, I'm teaching you to obey submission to authority. That's another realm, too. How many want authority? You have to be under authority to have authority. Does that make sense? Even if, well, what if I don't agree with the authority? Saul wasn't, a great, wasn't doing everything right. King David still honored the authority that God gave him so God could use him. He had a right to kill him because he's, be, he's trying to kill him. He, he could have done it without getting in trouble, but he honored the position that was there. Does that make sense? Kind of like with the government right now, we're supposed to honor the position of president. People aren't doing it because they don't like the president, but you have to honor the office. Just say, has, does that make sense? It's getting, some of you are like, I don't like that one. I mean, if they tell you to do some evil, sure, you don't do it. But it's, it's a lot of it is just learning to submit to authority because God wants to give you authority one day. And people might not agree with what you're saying. And if you sow the bad stuff, you're going to reap it. How many don't want to reap the bad stuff? You want people to trust that you're hearing God too. Amen? Uh, fasting is another one. Fasting sensitizes your spirit, man, so you could hear it and sense what God's saying. A lot of times you'll fast about something and you'll get the answer quicker. Why do you get it quicker? Is it because God felt sorry for you that you were hungry so he gave it to you? No. It's, he was already giving you the answer, but you couldn't perceive it. When you fast, it, it tunes you and it takes the distractions away from your spirit, your flesh, your mind. And then all of a sudden, oh, I see now what God's trying. And you get the, the answer was there, but you couldn't pick up the signal. Does that make sense? And it also sensitizes your spirit, your, your sharpness, your discernment, your dreams. And, and it, you know, people that I know that raise the dead often, they just fast often. It's just like a thing. How many want to do that more? I fast every day now in between my four meals, four, five times a day. 
I do a fast. So one guy goes, I went on a 40-day fast. So are you kidding? I fasted 40 times this week. And I, every night, Esther fasts. I don't eat or drink while I'm sleeping. And when I wake up, oh, my God, God, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> That's an American fast. That's not the fast you want. <laughs> Fasting between meals. So, <laughs> and then giving is another. You know, Acts 4, they gave homes and land to feed the apostles, the heavens open. Now, breakthrough giving is when you, how many need a breakthrough sometimes? So there's regular giving, like your tithes and your normal offerings. But when you need a breakthrough, how many ever fast and pray when there's a really big situation in your life? You're like, I'm fasting or I'm dead. How many have been through that? Like this, you know, you just, whatever it takes. Same in the giving. How many have ever been such under a financial pressure? You're like, you need a miracle. Whenever, I, I lived on the mission field for 12 years, been in ministry 25. We would go kamikaze. I shouldn't use that word. But I'll use it just for this time. Don't tell anybody. Kamikaze fasting. Or giving. So I say, okay, devil, you're attacking me on all sides. Watch this. I give my car away. I give all my cash away. Within 48 hours, I fast. I'll worship him all day. I'll forgive everyone I can think of. I'll pray in his presence. Within two, usually 24 to 48 hours, I get a breakthrough. I call that the nuclear option. Or as Bush would call it, the nuclear option. I'm kidding. No, I, I liked him. I was just messing. <laughs> How many, sometimes you got to pull the nuclear option. Like, you got, if you're willing to pay the price, you get a breakthrough. How many willing to pay the price? Because these Satanists, they'll fast and pray. These Muslims, they'll do, they'll fast, they'll do, they'll, they'll, they'll blow themselves up for Allah, and it's not, they're not even going to heaven. They think they're getting 70 versions. But the small print, they didn't tell them what age they were. They're like 90 years old with pitchforks. No, I'm kidding. They lied to them. I'm kidding. I shouldn't have said, forgive me, forgive me. Yeah, you have to forgive me now because I just repented. So you can't use that against me. Yeah, you shouldn't say that about it. Okay. No, but God loves them. God wants them saved. But, but people just fall. But how many know if they're willing to die for their faith and it's not the true faith, how many are willing to go all out? You can't even fast for a day? Come on. To seek God's face about your destiny? Come on. Let's not be lazy. How many are ready to do it? Well, uh, my class, I have to pray an hour a day to pass the prayer class. So no, that doesn't count. That You have to do that. <laughs> Sacrificial giving is something that opens up the realms of heaven. One, one time God told me, I was praying, praying, praying for TV ministry to open up, and it wasn't opening. And God goes, give $10,000. I go, what? I rebuke that in Jesus' name. I bind you lying spirit. Come out. I don't, 10000 you crazy? And the Lord says, you have it. No, I don't. Well, you have 2000 here in this account, 3000 in this account, and you have two credit cards. If you, if you all that put together, yeah, but I'll be in debt. Yeah, but the other 5000 someone owes you, they say they're sending you next month, so you can do it. Oh, my gosh. And I was like, the Lord says, you don't realize, I'm not trying to get you to give away all your money. I'm trying to get something to you. A man's gift makes room for him being served for great men. So another key was the giving can open up heaven. Solomon gave a thousand animal sacrifices and heaven opened up. And he goes, what do you want? The apostles gave homes and land to feed the apostles. Boom, glory opens up. And I, and I, I didn't realize it. So I was in Jerusalem. I gave it to this ministry there. 48 hours later, 24 hours later, a, a major TV network comes to me and says, not only do we want to interview you, we want you to have your own TV show. Would you take it? I go, how much does it cost? He goes, don't worry about it. We're going to give you a really, really cheap thing. Don't tell the other people on TV. And then I left Israel with $30,000 of cameras, mixture boards, just like crazy. Because I walked into something. I went beyond my limits. I gave in a way I've never given before. And then God opened stuff up that I've been waiting for. He needs an excuse to do it. Does that make sense? It's the same sometimes when you pray and fast. Daniel, he could have prayed for a few days and went, oh, it doesn't work. He fasted 21 days. He didn't realize that as he's fasting, that's giving strength to the angel to break through the principality to get him the answer. So is, it, is this making sense? So there's maintenance prayer life. There's a breakthrough prayer life. There's maintenance giving where you just kind of give just barely not to be in debt, but enough to barely survive. And there's giving to break through in your finances and in heaven. There's forgiving. I forgive him, but I never want to see him again. That's not really. <laughs> Thank God he doesn't forgive you that way. Imagine if he forgave you that way. I forgive Sally, but I don't want to talk to her again. <laughs> I love you far away. You know. Okay. It's, uh, seven minutes left. I'm going to keep going for seven more minutes. So who, who's desperate for this realm of glory? Who wants to be in the glory realm where God's visiting you, saturating you? Just rededicate your life. Just say, when I latch on to glory, I thought I knew that I taught on the glory and stuff, but when I actually experienced it, something changed. I, I, I taught on it, 
I, ha I think I was going in and out of gifting and glory without realizing it. Because sometimes I was running off my gifting. Other times God was just showing up, and I didn't fully understand. I would see the work of angels, but I didn't realize. I thought it was just the power of God in the room. And I started realizing, oh, and the angels work with me when I do this. The angels don't work with me when I do this. What happened was God would tell me sometimes, speak this, and I'm going to do a miracle. And I would resort to, no, I'm just, I just pull up a line and just lay hands on everybody because I'm comfortable with that. See, we go by what we're comfortable with. We don't want to take a risk in going to new realms in God. You're good at prophesying, so you just prophesy the same way. You just do deliverance the same way. You just lay hands on people. All right, we're going to pray for each one. And then it's like, it takes three hours. Everyone's got to watch one guy lay hands on 300 people. Well, that's great, but isn't there a faster way? I, don't, I never would say that in a meeting because it's disrespectful, but I would think it. I would be embarrassed. I would go, Lord, why am I bored in this healing meeting? I'm bored out of my mind. But I couldn't tell anybody because they'd think I'm backslidden. And he says to me, because you know there's another realm. Your spirit knows there's another dimension. How many want to go to the next dimension of glory? Where in three minutes, phew, the same amount of people could be just zapped by the power of God. There's another realm. Don't be satisfied where you're at. If you're in one place, go to the next realm. Don't be satisfied with your gifting. Go beyond that. Say, Lord, I want your glory more than gifting. And guess what will happen? Even the, the gifting you have will exponentially explode. Who wants to go from glory to glory? From glory to greater glory. Who wants the acceleration in your life in every area? Seek him first. Lay aside every weight. Run the race. Just put away anything holding you back, even your mind. You know, your mind is an access point as well. God speaks oftentimes in dreams, visions, and when you're praying thoughts, if your mind is cluttered with too much busyness, Facebook, Internet, email, work, so you're trying to pray, but you're thinking about all these things at the same time, and you're saying, how come I can't get an answer from God? Because the download, the, the, the download is bigger than with the memory that you have left in your brain. So you, the picture can't get downloaded. Does that make sense? So you have to, you know, like a computer, you got to erase stuff so you, can, so you can have more memory to be downloaded. Like a video can't, the video can't get downloaded because you got too much stuff on the screen, on the memory bank. So lay aside every weight, every concern. Be, be anxious for nothing and then just wait on the Lord and then he can speak to you. A lot of times just get, your mind's got to be uncluttered so you, you can hear God. How many want it to be uncluttered? And, I, and it's hard because we have a, the world we live in, digital age. But there's times you got to put it away and just seek God and not let that interfere and you'll get answers from God. I still got four minutes. So they told me to 12. You're like, I got to get to my class or work or whatever. You, there's no more class now, right? Pray, you guys are lucky. Only a few hours of school. So we're going to pray in just a minute. I'm going to ask God to hover over you. And I'm going to ask God to bring you a revelation of his glory. How many want that? The knowledge of his glory. And tomorrow morning I'll share some other stuff. I'm just going to put as much nuggets as I can of keys that will help you succeed in your walk with God. Amen? None of you are here by accident. You're not here because your mom just sent you here. Maybe she did, but you're here because God wanted you here for a reason. How many want to walk in your full destiny? Your full destiny will be realized the more you spend time in his glory. You could go 20 years ahead of your time. You could in one year go 20 years ahead of your time. And Let's say if you, the, the rate you're going now in 20 years will be here. You could be doing that in one year. The speed at which you accomplish God's destiny is up to you. How fast you go into him and hunger for him. He doesn't have to take 20 years. How many want to go faster? There is an acceleration on the earth right now. If you jump into that acceleration in that glory, it'll go very fast. You see, I see young guys just say three years, four years, and they're, they're, have, they're leading huge movements with maturity. Even their maturity and their, somehow God did a quicker work. And some guy been saved 30 years, he's still got an attitude problem. And God can't trust him. How many want God to, to use you quicker? Die quicker. Die, sucker. But I've been on this cross. I deserve a resurrection. You do, maybe, but dead people don't talk like that. They don't talk at all. <laughs> so you're dying, but you're not dead. I mean, I'm not saying I'm perfect either, I'm not, but I'm going that. I know where I need to go. How many want to go to that where you're dead, he can resurrect you? Dying is not the same as dead. Just keep going a little more until you're dead. Amen. All right, we're going to pray. Put your hands in the air like you just don't care. <laughs> we can have fun. I could do the serious. It's a great honor for you to be here among me. I'm honored by my honor. No, but, but I, I want to be real with you guys because I know your generation, okay? And you want real. You don't want just blah, blah, blah. Amen? I mean, I could do homiletical, hermeneutical way. I know how to do all that. But for you guys, I'm trying to give it to you straight because that's how you receive it better. Amen? How many want that? So, Father, we lift our hands to you. You know where we're at. I pray that your presence and your glory would hover over the students. As we got 11.59, we got one more minute. I pray for your presence to hover over them, just like you did last night. Visit them, just like the, the stu count, student councils guy that told me this morning, the glory was hovering over him this morning, even as he woke up, there was an overflow. I pray there would be an overflow of your glory, visitation, heavenly encounters. You would show them their destiny. You would start to show them your ways. You would start to 
draw them even more intimate with you, Father. And in that intimacy, as Paul said, to know you first, then to make you known. They would first spend time knowing you so they can make you known. And as, you, as you're in the school, you, your fire would burn through them. You'd burn all the stuff that would hinder them in the future, all the flesh, all the attitudes. It's like this disciples with Jesus for three years. They had to go through all that stuff. You're in the discipleship program with Jesus right now at this Bible school. Let God break you. Let him humble you. Go through it now. Way better now than to do it later when you're in the ministry. Just say, Lord, do what you got to do. Kill me, break me, humble me, whatever I need to be, to be what you've called me to be. Take that fire. Cleanse my lips, Lord. Cleanse my mind. Cleanse my DNA. Cleanse my bloodline. Cleanse my, the iniquity on my family line. Whatever has to happen, set me free, Lord, completely so you can use me, Father. Some are gold. Some are bronze. Some are silver. Lord, I want to be gold. I want you to use me like gold. So, so do the work, the fiery work in me so that you can use me, Father. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Yeah, these are a little shorter. Last night we had more time to just explode it, but these are just one hour kind of. So, so I could have started with miracles because there was, you know, still in the atmosphere, but I feel like I, I wanted to teach you some stuff so you have something to take with you. Because we could do miracles all day, but if you don't know what I know, you're not going to do it. Amen. All right, go, go eat, drink, and be merry or fast or whatever you want to do. Tomorrow morning at 11 o'clock, I'll see you back here. Give someone a hug. Tell them, don't worry, you're going to look better when you get to heaven. Oh, and we got books back there. Get all the books. There's Courts of Heaven, How to Go to the Jail. On me even praying for you, there's a glory room that's here. It says that uh, Jesus went to many places and they were all healed. It doesn't say he laid hands on everybody all the time, but they were healed. How many believing God can touch you, speak to you? We've had crazy things happen just like teaching. You know, start teaching and suddenly people missing teeth, teeth start growing out. Crazy stuff. I'm just teaching and someone, got, someone starts screaming and demons come out. It's fun. How many want to do this every day? Now, who was not here last night? You were not here last night. Raise your hand. Okay, so you can come up to repent really quick. The altars are open. All right, that's no, okay. No, it was fun. How many got healed last night? How many got healed but you didn't testify because you didn't know, you didn't realize you were healed or just for whatever reason you didn't get to testify but you realized you were healed? How many were healed and did not share? You were healed. What were you healed of? You what? Your feet, what was wrong with them? Flat feet. She was about to say fat feet, and she meant flat feet. <laughs> Some people have flat feet and fat feet, too, so it's, it, it could be, yeah. So they weren't hurting anymore? And they don't, you don't have flat feet anymore, or what? But the pain's gone. Praise God. That's awesome. Praise you, Jesus. Anyone else was healed of something last night? I know we had a lot of creative miracles, but most of them shared things disappearing, and I forgot what all the stuff we had. It's a blur to me now. Anyone else? Anyone died? <laughs> How many got weight loss? Who got weight loss? Sometimes we see people just dropping weight in the glory realm, instant weight loss miracles. Um, I'm going to explain a little bit about this glory realm. How many want to know more about the glory? How many want to operate in his glory? How many know about the anointing already, the anointing? Okay, so I share a little bit about that. And, and you know you're anointed to do the work of ministry, right? How many know that's good? And you and how you stir up that anointing, you pray in the spirit, you read the word, you get fired up, and you go out and you minister, and you release the power of God. How many have done that? Two people. That's awesome. All right. No, no more than that. And, and that's great, and God uses you. you. You have different giftings, anointings that God uses you. And I shared last night, it's like a battery of a laptop computer. We're going to be renovating our four-year area, which is good. They're going to be painting and do things like that. So he's asked me just to let you know that from now on, that will not be a holding place for your food, your drinks, or your skateboards. So if they come up missing, you've been warned. <laughs> um, actually, really the truth is, is when you put your skateboard against the wall, it kind of chips at the paint. And because uh, the Lord has provided that we be able to renovate that, we want to keep that as nice as possible. Okay, so uh, can y'all please just do that? We love that you skateboard. I think it's wonderful. I have a son that will be 25 on Sunday, and he was a skateboarder, but he knew not to put them on my walls. Right? Okay. All right. How many of y'all are excited? Today is Wednesday. It's a great day to be alive. It's a beautiful day in Texas. The sun is shining. I have some bad news. Cold front's coming in tonight. <laughs> oh, you people. Come on. I met a student here once, and he said, how can Texas be so sunny all the time? I was like, that's a thing? Like, you're, you're upset about that? That's funny. Anyways, so just remember, please do not, no longer bring your food, your drinks, and things like that, and send them out in the foyer, because they will be thrown away. 
And uh, I don't know how to skateboard, but if your skateboard's out there, I might be learning. Okay, so don't, don't leave your skateboards out there, park them somewhere else, okay? All right, so how many of you were here last night? I've heard great things. I saw a testimony on Facebook where somebody was just simply watching online, and they just got so uh, revved up by what the Holy Spirit was doing, they weren't even here. So I have great expectancy today. So let's just welcome Dr. Herzog today and give him room to move. Thank you. Let's give Jesus a bigger hand. Come on. Woo! You are worthy, Lord. Praise you, Jesus. Woo! Just, let's just lift your hands to the Holy Spirit right now. And the, there's still an overflow from last night here. You feel it really strong. How many feel that here? It's charged up. You release it. And that's great. But there's another dimension of the glory where it's not just coming from the anointing within you. It's a glory cloud around you. You're in the presence of God, living under open heaven. How many want that? And when you're under an open heaven, it's, it's not dependent just on you. Because if it's just you, say you're a pastor or something or you're an evangelist and someone calls you, hey, can you drive five hours and pray for this person? This person's sick. All right, well, you have to drive over there five hours, pray for them, come back. But when you're in the glory realm, it's a whole different thing. There's no distance of time in the glory realm. How many understand that? There's no distance of time or space. So Jesus tells the Roman centurion, you know, hey, I mean, or the Roman centurion says, just, just speak the word, Jesus, and my servant will be healed. And Jesus says, this guy's got the highest level of faith of all of Israel. And he's not even Israeli. He's not even Jewish. He doesn't even have a covenant with the God of Israel, but he gets it. And that hour he was healed. How many want to move like that? So there's no distance of time or space. In the, I remember I was in a meeting and I said, there's someone here. And I gave the name, first and last name of the person. How many love it when you get accurate in the prophetic? Isn't that fun? Only bummer was they weren't there. <laughs> So there's someone here with this name, but there was no one standing up with that name. <laughs> so is it, isn't it awesome? It was accurate, but there's no one there by that name. <laughs> so I go, what is going on here? And the, the Lord says, you just preached about there's no distance in the glory. And a lady comes up and goes, that's my husband's full name. And I said, stand up. And at first I didn't know what was wrong. And I just pointed at her and I said, come back. And I said, his name, come back. And she fell out in the spirit, came back the next day and told me he was in a coma for four days. When I called his name out, he woke up. And I started picking up on the no distance in the glory thing. Uh, last night I shared about a resurrection we saw in Africa from a distance. We just commanded this, bot, this person to come back from the dead while I'm on the stage. And at the hospital, she rose back from the dead from a distance. How many know you can operate in those realms of glory? So you're not limited just to, you know, the, of the foundational stuff is laying out of hands. You know, and Paul even says this is great, but let's not stay only with the elementary principles, but let's go on to perfection. How many want to go on? And we are in the last days now. How many want to go from glory to glory? Give him praise. Aren't you grateful today? You're grateful to be at a place like Christ for the nations, a place where the wells of healing are being dug and being reopened from the, uh, the old into the new. This is a place where God is welling up in this place. This is a place that's going to change you for all eternity. You'll never be the same again. I'm so grateful, God, that I get to come into a place, Father God, where the leadership of the school invites men and women in to remind us to whom we belong, but God, not just to get to that place where we're merely living, but thriving, Father, that we see signs and wonders and miracles happening in our very midst, and that it even goes out from here into the internet and all the people that we touch in the world, God. We're so grateful that you would call us to be your own, Father, and we welcome you in this place today. We recognize that you're here, Father. God, we're just grateful for you. Thank you, Jesus, for the sacrifice. Holy Spirit, have your way today. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, guys. We all have a seat this morning. I have a couple of brief announcements, but I need to make sure you're listening well. If you were in the very back and I can't see your lovely faces, please move forward. You need to be no further than two to three rows behind the Great Divide. Uh, and I do have on my boots today... They're not my sassy boots, but they're my cute boots. But I still, I, you know, that still means I'm in business, okay? It's good. So y'all go ahead and move up, move forward. It's a good thing. Besides, we all know that all the glory flows from right here, right out. Come on. I always wanted to sit. I sat right there where that beautiful single mom is, right there. I sit right there. That was my seat when I was a, a student here, but I caught things. I caught it. It was good. So y'all just move forward, please. 
I appreciate that. Thank you. All right. So uh, James Reed asked me to make an announcement. So please make sure you're listening because I don't want you to come to me later and say, I didn't hear it. I didn't know. It was fun last night. Lord, we just welcome your presence in this place. We welcome you, Holy Spirit, right now. Fill this place with your glory. Continue to take us from glory to glory. Every service, Father. We're not satisfied with what we had last night. It was awesome, but we pray that you would do more today even, Father. Open the windows of heaven, Father. Open the windows of heaven. Teach us, speak to us, touch us, whatever you want to do, Father. Give us revelation today, Father. Take every veil from our eyes off. Take every blockage. Give us fresh revelation today, Father. We worship you. We praise you. We welcome you, Holy Spirit. Angels, you're free to minister to your people today. You feel that presence here? It's really, really thick. And how many want to live in this every day? And this is the secret of staying. How many want to never get burned out? Stay in his presence and his glory. We've been doing this for 25 years, and I'm just as excited now as when I was here at the school. And the key is intimacy, close to God every day. How many want that? Because you can have all, and you should study. You need to know the word. You need to memorize the scriptures. You need all that. But if you don't have the intimacy with him, then you could be, you know, Pharisees know the scriptures. And, and they had even good doctrine, but yet they didn't know him. How many want to know him first? And out of that knowing him and out of that presence, God will start, you know, because you can have the scriptures memorized, and you should, but you still want to be led by the Lord. When you talk to people, you want to know, okay, God, what do you want me to say? I don't want to rely on my own understanding or learning. I want to rely on you, Father. And that's what Paul was brilliant. He knew languages. He, I mean, he pretty much wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, yet he said, I don't rely on my human learning, my human wisdom, and he was brilliant, but, but I rely on God to know him, to make him known. All my learning is as done compared, compared to the excellency of knowing him. How many want to know him more? And I can feel that presence here right now. Just, just let it come with a few more seconds here. Whew, Father, we just welcome you. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Welcome you, Holy Spirit. Hmm, thank you, Lord. Man, it's thick in here, thick, thick, thick presence. Even as I'm teaching, if you know, be, be free to be healed because God can just touch you at any moment. It's not dependent on...